What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Pickleball Connection podcast. I'm Danae. And I'm Barrett. And we're super stoked to be hanging out with you guys today. Today, we're going to be doing a segment that we call CTN, which is Cruise the News. This is where we bring you all the latest pickleball news, juicy goss, and all the fun topics. So without further ado, let's get into it. is right here we gonna give them what they came for we gonna take it up from last year watch the game change watch the game change watch the game change watch the game change yeah. To it here. So our first topic of the day, um, I didn't see an article released on this, but we want to do a little update uh, on the most recent MLP event, which if you guys don't know, MLP is Major League Pickleball or the team format in professional pickleball. And they just got through with their mid-season tournament. Um, and there was some more paddle drama. Paddle drama seems to be the kind of hot topic we love paddle drama we love paddle drama <laughs> do you guys love paddle drama seriously let us know in the comments <laughs> um but yeah so it was the mid-season tournament and there was more paddle drama that ensued which we're gonna get into but first just breaking down if you're not familiar with how mlp works um there are multiple events throughout the year these teams not every team goes to every event so the interesting thing about this mid-season tournament is because of all the drama again that happened with major league pickleball at the beginning of this year um the the season didn't start right at the beginning of the year it didn't start i believe until like was it may or something may, something like may that or June. so because of that at this mid-season tournament some of the teams have played way less games than the other teams so like for example the new york hustlers which is jack Sox team i think they've played like eight matches where um, a team like the the New Jersey Fives, who actually is Anna Lee Waters' team, they ended up winning the midseason tournament. They had much fewer points coming into the tournament because they've only played like three matches. So it's all going to even out as the season goes on. Um, all the teams, the standings will be more kind of realistic because uh, the teams will have all played the same number of matches for the end of season tournament. So anyways, midseason tournament, basically all this means is they seeded the teams the best they knew how, um, even though the standings weren't perfect, um, and they put them into a bracket and they played for uh, the in premiere, it was an $80,000 payout. So that's $20,000 potentially going to, uh, it's depending on how the team's going to divide up the money, but it's going to each of the four players, 20K, pretty good. I believe the challenger level payout was thirty thousand dollars so still pretty good um but at this event um like i mentioned the new jersey fives ended up winning uh zane navertil kind of goes into some of the details behind it on uh, the dinks podcast if you want to check that out but there was some paddle drama that happened did you, did you hear about it i did but you let's talk about it let's talk about it okay so Pro Pickle Labs or PPL is kind of the paddle testing on site. You know, there's a company that comes out and they regulate the paddles to make sure everyone's playing with, you know, no paddles that are juiced up or illegal. They run a series of tests on the paddles. They then put a sticker on the paddle saying it's approved for play and they play with it. So word has it that Pro Pickle Labs was kind of all over the place in this tournament. And they've notoriously been the best testing out there to this point. Pro Pickle Labs is also associated with the UPA, which um, allegedly this is the organization that is going to be charging paddle companies. Now, this is a rumor. It's not been completely confirmed, but also hasn't been denied. They're going to be charging paddle companies starting in 2025 $100,000, right? And then an additional $5,000 per skew in order to have their paddles approved. So 
A lot of people think this is going to shrink down the number of paddle companies that are out there um, and only the big fish will survive. We'll see. I guess we'll see who has money and who doesn't at that point. So this same company was kind of all over the place. They apparently had some equipment malfunctioning happening. There were certain teams at MLP who none of their players could get any paddles to pass. I heard there were professional players running to the Pickleball Central tent, trying to buy paddles off the shelf, and even those weren't passing. So it came down to it that they ended up only being able to test for grit and not deflection. Grit is how they test you know, for how much spin is going to be put onto the ball based off the grittiness of the paddle. And deflection is kind of how much the paddle creates that trampoline effect, which is creating a lot of extra power more so this year than we're used to. So I heard that they sent a text out to all the players basically saying, we can't fix this issue with deflection, play with whatever you want. So eventually there were players that had all their paddles. I believe there was a player that had 11 paddles fail. Um, some players had all the paddles they brought with fail and nobody knew what they were going to do. And then all of a sudden, uh, it was rumored that a team was kind of boycotting playing. So they were maybe not even there say, Hey, if we can't get paddles passed, we're just not going to play shortly after that, whether it was a coincidence or not, uh, it came out and they basically said, um, play with whatever you want. And so they kind of opened the floodgates and basically paddles were pretty unregulated for MLP in the midseason tournament. Kind of crazy when you consider this, you know, trajectory we've been on with paddle regulations that they kind of open the floodgates. And the interesting topic that I kind of want to discuss with you is do you see an end to this? Are there always going to be ways around this that companies are going to find their way out? Because obviously this is some on the manufacturers, but it's also on the testing. Uh, Zane did mention in that Dink podcast, his solution is like, we need to stop focusing on paddles and start focusing on regulating the ball, which in our previous podcast, if you haven't listened, we talked about a quieter ball and how that would potentially affect pickleball and the growth of pickleball. But what Zane is talking about is a ball that plays slower. So going back to, do you remember back in the day, like the OG pickleballs that are like, now they're like the indoor ones. They have like 26 holes. The holes are much bigger. They fly much slower because of the air resistance. You remember those? So that would be like Zane's like, do we go back and we go back to a slower ball and just open the floodgates with paddles? Because no one can seem to figure out how to regulate and test paddles properly. What do you think about this whole concept Zane brought up about we need to stop focusing on paddle regulation and start focusing on ball regulation. I mean, I don't know. It's really difficult because I, I don't, I don't know a lot about the testing and on and the intricacies with that. I think it's a little scary to me to be like, there is no regulations with the paddle, you know, and we're just going to do the ball. I'm like, well, what, what the heck are we going to do with the paddles? Like, what if we see people playing with, steel paddles or like, you know what I mean? Right. Crazy materials. Like I think there needs to be some regulation on the paddles, but the reality is it's so unregulated to where paddle companies are just finding ways to make them powerful every time a limit is put on them. Um, so. Yeah. And there's other paddle companies that they're, they're having paddles fail and then they're releasing basically the same paddle under a different name or design and it's passing and they're kind of finding their way around the system so i think with the ball you know zane was basically saying that that a ball is much easier to regulate if you want to slow the game down you know it's really hard with all the paddle companies and all the different skews it's really hard to manage regulation and if we focus just on the ball it'd be different i think i'm like you remember playing with those like indoor type balls? Like one, I think they would be affected by the wind a lot more because there's a lot more air resistance. They're, they're, they're moving slower. So they're more likely to be affected by the wind. And two, I, I like playing with a harder ball, like a firmer ball. Mm -hmm. I think it feels better. I think, I think it, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't get affected as much by conditions. So 
I don't know. I don't really, I'm not really for changing the ball, but I'm like, yeah. we do have to figure out this regulation thing. Yeah. I'm with you. I feel like changing the ball would, I don't know. I, I don't like the idea of it, but maybe it's just because it's change and nobody likes change. But I think that there should be some regulation with paddles. And I just think honestly, our testing needs to get better. And a lot of it is our testing needs to be more consistent. You know, um, I know that something that he mentioned was like the weather really affects how paddles pass or fail. If right. Like if it's hotter outside. Yeah. If it's a hotter, the paddles will fail. That's why you, you'll, some, some pros were talking about putting their paddles in the refrigerator or freezer because it helps them pass. So, you know, our testing honestly needs to get better. It needs to be more consistent across the board. And I think we're just in this era of trying to figure out how to regulate things in a way that companies can't just get a skirt around the rules, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think it's very interesting to see what's going to happen because everybody knows there's got to be some sort of better system to regulate the sport. Uh, we talked on a previous podcast about the sport, uh, about line calls, how there has to be a better system for line calls as we're trying to legitimate, legitimize this sport, um, introduce things like gambling and, and other things that really put the sport on the map and legitimize the sport. We've got to clean up some of these things. We're still in the growing pains, I think, you know, and so it was pretty interesting though. I was talking with a friend the other day. Um, he's a, he's a very like entry level player. He goes out and plays a couple nights, um, rec play. And he was saying that he just got like a, a newer generation paddle. You know, he's been playing with an old one and he was like, Whoa, the difference is insane. Like mm -hmm. he was so shocked at how a different paddle really does affect your game. It affects the ball. And I think that that's very interesting because there are clear advantages that are um that are are had with paddles and i think i'm very interested uh, we've talked about this multiple times but i still want to see one tournament one pro tournament where everyone's required to play with the same paddle i know jack sock mentioned like an all lux tournament where everyone has to oh, play with like funny. the lux um but yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to see what happens moving forward. Um, but guys, let us know in the comments, what do you think about uh, regulating the ball, regulating paddles? Um, do you think this is a huge issue? Last podcast, like we, we were talking about the sound of the the ball, but do you think it's like we need to make the ball slower? Um, I think maybe it's something to look at at the pro level, making it slightly slower, but I wouldn't want to do that to amateurs because I think you know, the pros can put so much more power on mm -hmm. the ball already. And I think that maybe you look at doing different balls for different levels. Um, but again, I think I'm with you. I think at the end of the day, if the, we can figure this out, it should be on the paddle side. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But let us know what you guys think. And uh, we'd love to hear, hear your thoughts in the comments. As always, guys, please submit your questions below as well. It can be completely unrelated to anything we've talked about in the podcast. But we will go and we will read your questions and try to answer them on a future pod. Do you want to move to the next one? Let's go to the next one. All righty, let's do it. Hey guys, real quick, we do want to briefly mention Selkirk backpacks. We really love the backpacks that Selkirk has put out. They're really functional, really versatile. They look really sharp. We use them when we play and we use them when we travel. Actually, last time we were in the airport, we packed our Selkirk backpacks for basically our luggage. And the person behind us was like, whoa, like those are such cool backpacks. Like it's awesome. They're, they're like, where'd you get them? Yeah, it, it's just, they're super functional. They have a bunch of different sizes. I take stuff for work and mine and bring it to a coffee shop. I mean, they're just, they're awesome. Yeah guys, so if you're in the market for a backpack, um, there's all different sizes, all different colors, head on over to sellkirk.com and get yours today. Okay, so this was a really funny post that I saw on Reddit and I honestly, kind of related. So this person is talking and the title of this is I got humbled last night by a senior citizen. So the post goes 32 male here. I'm new to the sport and hobby. I got destroyed last night by a female senior citizen. She asked if I wanted to play. I said, sure. And she was hardly trying and was giving me pointers along the way. <laughs> I do do I do jujitsu com and compete occasionally. I've also had sanctioned MMA fights in my younger days. 
I do understand you have to put in the hours to get better. But even with that said, it felt so weird to be out hustled and outplayed so badly. I'm going back to my adult karate where the competition is easier. <laughs> he goes on to say, I came into pickleball knowing it takes hours to practice and get good at something, but I was, but even though I knew that, I was just so effing surprised I got smoked so bad by an old lady. And so that's the, that's the post. And then there's like tons of comments of people giving their feedback. So I wanted to bring this up to you and one ask if you had that experience when you first started playing pickleball, did you feel like you got beat by people that like you thought could never beat you as a sport? Oh, absolutely. Do you remember Bob? I, yes, I remember Bob. You should tell the people about Bob. There's not much to say other than that he was good. Yeah, you guys, when we started playing pickleball, this was like the very first, you know, time we were learning in the sport. There was this, he was in his 70s and his name was Bob. And dude, Bob humbled me the first time I played doubles. And the angles, man. I still dude, remember, I still he remember would, Bob's angles. He would he would not move. I mean, the guy's in his 70s. He's not moving fast, but he would literally stay in one side of the court and just hit these angles. And I'm like, I'm like a college athlete and I'm like running down the court and he totally beat me. And for the longest time I kept on getting beat by these old people. It, I remember you telling me like it actually m motivated you to play more It motivated you to get. Yeah. Good. It's like the other night we had a game night with some of our friends and we got destroyed and Danae was like determined, like we're going to go freaking practice because we're going to yeah. beat them next time we're we have a game night with them. So we're practicing this, taboo right now. This woman, um, taboo the game, <laughs> practicing the, the board game, taboo. Um, this woman, uh, it, she takes losing pretty personally, and I think that's what happened with Bob. And it is it is crazy. I mean, obviously, we've been around the game a little bit longer. We've gotten a little bit higher level, but, like, I still know some really good older players. Like, I was playing this past weekend, and – this guy who's older, he's probably what in his sixties, he hit like three Ernie's and I like jumping Ernie's. And I was like, mm -hmm. respect. Honestly, I think we've, we've talked about it before, but one of the reasons this game is exploding is because people of all backgrounds, all demographics, all ages can be pretty freaking good. I mean, you're probably not going to see many 70 year olds competing at on the pro tour, but to go out, you can get humble by some people at Rec. You can get humble. I also think people. it's funny how this guy was like, it was kind of like, I love these people on Reddit. It's always like a humble brag. It's yeah. like, I was an MMA fighter, fighter. and I'm super in shape I'm and jiu -jitsu, jiu -jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> but I got beat by, but I got humbled by Karen, it. you know, yeah, like, grandma. so yeah, I think this is, this is actually very common for people. But what's interesting is I think again, it pushes people to want to get better. Like, I love it. There's nothing that would make me want to get better at something than seeing an old man or woman just wipe the floor with me. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, so big respect. If you've ever gotten beat by an elderly person, comment down below. We could start a support group because... Or if you are the elderly person that likes to beat up on on the young Fair. youngins, expose yourself in yeah. the comments. Um, okay. Should we move to the next one or do we have anything more? No, let's move to the next one. Okay, cool. All right. The next one here is, um, one, I am curious to see what you have to say. This is also from the wonderful, wonderful world of Reddit. I can't do that. I do that every time. <laughs> wonderful world of you Reddit. You do try it. Like I do try it. Every, I don't know why. Everyone. But here's the question. This was seven days ago on Reddit. Go look at it. If you're interested, there's another post very similar to this, but basically it says, What's your pickleball superstition? And it was pretty funny to read some of these comments, but this person said, I'm superstitious about staying. I am superstitious. Wow, words are hard today. About saying one more game. And that comes from skateboarding, snowboarding, and mountain biking in my youth, um, which I know you have some, maybe you can relate. Mm -hmm. uh, something negative uh, that would happen after saying one more run or one last trick, like a broken board or bad injury so you'd never say that cursed phrase basically he's kind of 
alluding to his snowboarding days or yeah. something like that. But do you agree with this? Or do you have any other pickleball superstitions? I kind of do. Maybe it's superstition. Maybe it's not. I've also called it called it a mental reset mechanism, but I feel like it's kind of evolved into a superstition. But I, I always tap yep. the back of the fence right before I serve. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what it is. Part of it, like I said, it's kind of a mental reset, a mental reset mechanism, but also it's kind of turned into this thing where I'm like, I almost like can't start the point unless I do that. It's kind of funny, but I was reading some of the other comments and other people do this too. Like some people, this person says, I always touch the ball. Like I have to touch the ball if my partner is serving. So like means before they serve, they have to somehow like figure out how to touch the ball before their partner serves it. Yeah, like they want to get involved. Yeah, like they don't, I don't. They want to touch it in between points. Which I get it. And then this other person says, "I'm the opposite. I don't want to contaminate the juju." <laughs> um, a couple other ones were in here, tapping the fence behind me before receiving a serve. That's interesting. Um, this one says bouncing the ball three times before serving. Um, yeah, there's just like a ton of like little things people do. It's so fascinating. See, here's the thing. I'm trying to think, do I have any? And I can't think, maybe you could help me point some out if I do have them. I mean, a, a simple one, I think a lot of people have a serve routine. So I don't know if you like bounce the ball yeah. or you like touch the, oh. I don't know if I feel superstitious about it though. You know, so, there's some people, actually, I think I read a comment in here, but I think Anna Bright said this too. Um, there's... Some people will have a forehand side and a backhand side to their paddle. Like the paddle has to be oh, a yeah. certain. Like it has to be rotated a certain way. They only yes. hit forehands on this side. Yes. See, I don't. I kind of. I don't either. Wait. I don't no, know. I, don't. I, I don't. might though because I kind of feel like I grip. I line up my fingers with the grip often, which like, is kind of. How point funny of is it that we do that? I think what I'm gathering from this is I need some superstitions. Yeah, you need some so I'm gonna, superstitions. So I'm going to try some things out and see if <laughs> see I like. if you get some points. Yeah. We'll see if I like, if I win a game handedly against some really good players doing a superstition, maybe that will become my yeah, superstition. Yeah, there you go. But yeah. But guys, let us know in the comments, do you have any superstitions, little things, little quirks? Little things that help you on court. Yeah. Curious to know. Yeah, Barrett might use them if it's good. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Go ahead and DM me a list and I'll try them out. Um, all right, guys, just as we mentioned before, please uh, go ahead and submit any questions that you have, any topics you want us to cover. Um, if you guys need some good instructional content, we'd encourage you to check out a YouTube channel we help run and manage called playpickleball.com. It's also a website, playpickleball.com. But on YouTube, there's a new video that comes out every Wednesday, and it's various topics from things like simple rules to um, you know instructional videos, how to hit certain shots, how to progress, strategies, tips, all that good stuff. Be sure to go check out playpickleball.com. Uh, and again, a video comes out every Wednesday. Do you have anything else you want to leave them with? I don't think so. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us on today's episode of the Pickleball Connection. Be sure to like share, download this podcast, and we will see you on the next one. We'll see you next week.